I launched this channel with my video 5 Underrated Fantasy Books, where I talked about 5 fantasy books that were underrated. And since then I've been asked to do another instalment, but instead of me just ranting on about books that I loved, I thought why don't I put out a poll on Instagram for your underrated fantasy reads. I might not get to them all, I'll try and get to as many as possible. I don't know how many I'll get to, but editing Andrew, how many did we get to? That's how many underrated fantasy books we're going to look at. Let's go. Numero uno is Beyond Redemption by Michael R. Fletcher. Beyond Redemption is Michael R. Fletcher's debut novel that was traditionally published. So let's have a little look at the stuff. Faith shapes a landscape, defines the laws of physics, and makes mockery of the truth. Common knowledge isn't an axiom, it's a force of nature. What the masses believe is, but insanity is a weapon. Conviction a shield. Delusions give birth to new feral gods. Michael R. Fletcher has also self-published a bunch of books like Blackstone Heart. And while I've not read any of his books yet, every single one of his books sound so creative. It sounds like he really pushes boundaries on fantasy and tries things that are completely unique. And I've heard they're really dark and messed up, so we're always up for dark and messed up. Next up we have the Pillars of Peace trilogy, which I do have a copy of right here. The first book being The Look of a King, which I have read and I really enjoyed. I do agree that it's completely an underrated series. This is a self-published trilogy. It is very classical in feeling. The book has two contrasting POV characters. It has Cyrus, who is a storyteller living in a little village out in the middle of nowhere. Next we have Prince Augustus, who is next in line for the throne and he's really struggling to meet expectations. Also, he's just not a very nice guy. Then their paths overlap and we get this get this world collision and maybe they're not so different after all. I really enjoyed the first book and book two and three are meant to be even better so one to maybe check out. Next up we have the Raven Rings trilogy. I hadn't even heard of this one before this but I have looked into it and the first book is called Odin's Child by Siri Peterson. 15 winters old. Hirka learns that she's Odin's child, a tailless rot from another world, despised, dreaded and hunted. She no longer knows who she is, and someone wants to kill her to keep it a secret. But there are worse things than humans, and Hirka is not the only creature to have broken through the gates. This is a Norse inspired fantasy and I don't know that much about it, so if you read it, let me know. It certainly sounds intriguing, I love Norse inspired works, one of my favourites being Bloodsworn. Next up we have all of Brian Stavely's books. <laughs> I do not see Brian Stavely's works talked about very often, but when it does come up, it's always so highly praised. It's a US floppy paperback and I love it. The Emperor of Anur is dead, slain by enemies unknown. His daughter and two sons scattered across the world must somehow stay alive and unmask the assassins. But each of them also has a life path on which their father set them. Destinies entangled with both ancient enemies and inscrutable gods. It sounds so good. Next up we have a book series that I talked about fairly recently in my 12 creative fantasy books list. The Codex Alera. This book has the premise of Jim Butcher kind of being challenged to mix two random ideas to make into a fantasy series. And the person gave him Pokemon and the Roman Empire. It's true, I don't see anyone talking about this series. So if you read it, let me know what you thought. Next up we have The Soul's Aspect by Mark Holloway. This is a self-published debut coming of age fantasy in their tradition of Poppy War, The Name of the Wind, Never Night, and The Shadow of What Was Lost. A healer forced to become a killer from an empire that would grind his country to dust. I really like the idea that the main character is actually a healer that's turned into a killer. I think it's quite a interesting premise. Also, I really like the cover on that one. So cool. Next up, we have the Ranger's Apprentice series by John Flanagan. This is another one I'd never heard of until I made this video. I guess that's kind of the point of them being underrated books, but I digress. This is a 16 book series. However, they seem to be quite short from the sounds of it. The first book is only 250 pages. Scratch that, book 10 is nearly 500. So I was going to say maybe they're all short, but nope. This sounds like a very sort of typical classic fantasy setup. We have these shadowy, elusive characters called the Rangers, who are the protectors of the country, 
and Will, a 15 year old boy, is chosen to be an apprentice for the Rangers. And all the while there is an evil force building an army to attack the kingdom. So if you're looking for more classical fantasy-esque type setups, Rangers Apprentice. Next up we have To Ride Hell's Chasm by Janny Wirtz. And this is a standalone fantasy novel, which is always nice to fit in between these huge series that we have in fantasy. Very apt since the last book we talked about was the 16 book series. When Princess Anja fails to appear at her betrothal banquet, the tiny peaceful kingdom of Sicily is plunged into intrigue. Two warriors are charged with recovering the distraught king's beloved daughter. As the princess's trail vanishes outside the citadel's gates, anxiety and tension escalate. This sounds like a very political and mystery based type fantasy story. And despite the fact it's a standalone, it is over 700 pages long. So there's plenty of content there for you. Not sure how underrated this series is because it's, I do see it quite a lot, but I have got a lot of people that mentioned the Goblin Emperor. The youngest half goblin son of the emperor has lived his life in exile, distant from the imperial court and deadly intrigue that suffuses it. But when his father and three sons in line for the throne are killed in an accident, he has no choice but to take his place as the only surviving rightful heir. Some people love this book. I've seen so many people say it's one of their favourite books of all time. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's people who hate it. However, a book that creates such a divisive split in the fandom, I always think is a really interesting book. It means it does something unique, something so strong and different that there are people who love and hate this unique creation. So if that sounds intriguing, maybe want to check it. Next up we have Retribution Falls by Chris Wooding. Now this is the author to The Ember Blade and Shadow Casket. And The Ember Blade is one of my favourite books of all time, so I am desperate to try out Chris Wooding's other work. So I am so excited to read his other books. I'm currently reading The Shadow Casket. And it's Steampunk Pirates! Steampunk Pirates! Do I need to read the synopsis? I don't think I do. Steampunk Pirates. Just scanning it for more buzzwords. Heist! There's a heist as well! I might have to read it very, very soon. Next up, we have a series that I have been recommended in the past, but I don't ever see it anywhere. But people seem to love it when they do read it. And that is Spellslinger. There are three things that earn you a man's name among the Jean Tep. The first is to demonstrate the strength to defend your family. The second is to prove that you can perform the high magic that defines our people. The third is simply to reach the age of 16. I was a few weeks shy of my birthday when I learned that I wouldn't be doing any of those things. This is another one that sounds really creative and unique. I really like the idea of magic kind of being involved with this con card game-esque setting. Okay, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. What's this one? Oh, damn right we're doing this one. Okay, finally we have 12 kings in Sharakai. Sharakai is a city in the desert ruled by 12 kings who rule with an iron fist. They're cruel, ruthless, powerful, and immortal. Not a great mix of things for the people of the city. And the people believe there is no hope for freedom under their rule. This is until Seda, a girl who lives in the slums, defies the king's rule and goes out on a holy night. And what she learns that night sets her on a path that winds between both the terrible truths of the king's mysterious history and the hidden riddles of her own heritage. And that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know any of your underrated fantasy books in the comments below. That's one of my favourite things about doing these lists of books is finding new and creative fantasy stories that I've never heard of before. I definitely need more, more books on the TBR. That's what I need. But thank you for watching and outro.